In this video, we're going to be building the best offense in Madden completely from scratch. We're going to be walking you through a brand new formation. You don't see a lot of players running online, but I do think it has a lot of potential. And we're going to be using this as kind of a, a way to teach some of the best offensive principles that you can apply to your own formation. Whatever that formation is, these are transferable concepts. So super excited to bring you this little mini series here. We are in the uh, Cincinnati Bengals offensive playbook where we take a look at the tight white off formation. This is a great formation that you can actually merge with a lot of the ebooks that I've already released. I've released um, some compression ebooks. I've released a bunch of bunch offensive ebooks this year. So if you want to get access to all of my full Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks, make sure that you join the Patreon. It's only $10 to become a member, and I guarantee it's going to help you become a better player. You get access to everything by becoming a member. So make sure to join the Patreon. The link is going to be down in the description. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this. We're going to be taking a look at the play uh, or the formation tight Y off week. And this is going to kind of be the formation that we're going to live in. Now, the five things that you need in any effective offense in Madden, you have to have a power play. This is a play that you can commit to, right? It's a bread and butter play. If you only have to run one play 80% of the game, what is that play for you? You have to have that. And we're going to start with that in this video. We're going to create a power play from scratch. I'm going to show you how to do that. The next thing you need is a counter play. This is an inverse. This is something that is going to counter what your power power play is doing well. So let's say, for example, your power play attacks the right side of the field really well. You want your counter play to attack the left side of the field very well. Or maybe you want your counter play uh, to attack the middle of the field very well, right? The next thing is a either, is either a play or a series of plays, and I call this constraint plays. When the defense is over committing, when they're overdoing something, when they're starting to spam the same adjustments over and over again, maybe they're running a lot of man coverage, maybe they're running a lot of zone coverage, maybe they're running a lot of match coverage, maybe they're blitzing you a lot, right? Maybe they're playing a lot of double Mabel style coverage, right? What is your constraint theory play system that is going to ensure that you can beat any of the meta defenses that you're going to see, right? So that might be a great man beater. It might be a great quick snap play. It might be a zone beater. I think constraint theory plays should be able to check the box on all five of those things. It better be quick snap friendly, be able to beat man, be able to beat zone, be able to beat the blitz, be able to beat match. And these are specific setups that you're going to use when the defense starts to kind of, I guess, get a little vanilla in terms of adjustments. The next thing that you need to have in any effective offense is a three-headed rushing attack, an ability to run the ball to the left side of the field, an ability to run the ball to the middle of the field, and an ability to run the ball to the right of the field. Now, for this formation, what I love about tight Y off is the running back is on the right-handed uh, or the right side of the quarterback. This means that if you're using a right-handed quarterback like, say, Aaron Rodgers or John Elway, the handoff animations are going to be significantly faster if you keep this formation as is, which means we're not going to have to teach flipping the formation. You can, um, but I definitely would encourage you to not run the ball or run a play action play if your running back is on the opposite side of the quarterback's throwing hand. So that is our fourth thing. And then our fifth thing is what are you going to do in the red zone? How are you going to ensure that you're scoring touchdowns as opposed to field goals when you've driven the ball up the field? We've got a ton of good stuff for you uh, and we'll find some good stuff out of this playbook as well. So without further ado, let's talk about a power play. What makes a good power play in Madden. In my opinion, there's a couple of things. It has to check all of the boxes, meaning it has to be able to beat man. It has to be able to beat zone. It has to be able to beat the blitz. It has to be able to beat match coverage. And it has to be able to be ran consistently at a very high level. So what is a good play for something like that? Well, what I like to look for is what I call power routes. That could be a corner route, that could be a crossing route, something like that. that what's a power route? I also like to maybe have the running back blocked because this is going to ensure that I'm gonna be able to block a lot of the meta defenses that I'm going to be facing. So for this formation, we're actually gonna be utilizing the play PA go, slot cross, this is gonna be our power play. Now from there, maybe we wanna set up a couple of different audibles um, that we might want inside zone. There's our three headed rushing tag, got that. Wheel spot, that could be a great constraint theory play, maybe a quick snap play. Flood drive could be a great counter play, right? PA go slot cross, this is something that we're you know gonna be coming out in every play, so we can replace this with something else. Maybe the play switch wide receiver drag, maybe the play wide red zone scissors. For now, we're gonna put switch wide receiver drag there. 
All right, PA go slot cross. Let's talk about this play and what you can do, how to go about actually creating a power play once you've decided what your play is going to be. In this formation, I think it makes a lot of sense to run this, generally speaking, with your uh, tight end on the wide side of the field because of the fact that we're, we don't really have any corner routes on the right side. And when we run a corner route, we ideally want to run that with our short side uh, or to the short side of the field because it's going to flood zones better. Okay, so that's something super important to kind of think through. So if that's the case, if the wide side of the field is going to be to the right side of the screen, then we need to start thinking through, okay, what are some routes that we can pair with this play that are going to make it really effective? Another really important thing to always check in anything that you run is when you motion receivers, where do they go? That's also something that's super important. So you see here, this receiver is going to go all the way to the right, right? It's just important to kind of, okay, I've found kind of a formation I want to mess with. Now, what can my motions give me, right? That's really important to understand. Now, what I like to do with this play, just kind of thinking about it as is, is I want to see how can this do against a cover four drop or a cover three, because I want to test to make sure that this pull route to CeeDee Lamb is actually effective or see if I need to maybe change it uh, based off of you know what's going on. So you see here, we're just gonna run it against cover four and you see really good little cover four beater. Okay, that's great. Now the next litmus test is to see, okay, well, how does this do with a baseline press defense, right? That's always something you want to kind of at least take a look at, a little sneak peek at here and what we're gonna see is because of that little tail on that streak, it's going to pull all kinds of routes, which is great. So we've kind of got a clear cut power route in this deep crosser um, that's going to get some separation. Now, the next thing that you've got to understand is, are you going to be an offense that's going to send five out? You're going to send four out on this play. And there's really two setups to this, but it's basically the same thing. All we're going to do right here is we're just going to put our tight end on a quick out route. What this is going to do is it's going to give us something quick against the blitz. It's going to give us something quick against man to man. So you see here, I could take the tight end, put him on a little baby out route, a little five yard out route, and I've got a really good concept. You also want to go ahead and kind of peek and see how does my plays do against man coverage. We see there Calvin Johnson is able to beat man coverage. Another thing that you might not have seen is this little wheel route to CD Lamb is actually a really good route for attacking man to man. You'll see right here, if they play man, I can high point and free form that up and over the man coverage for a big a big play so it, it already we know that it attacks the meta well we know that it attacks man coverage well we know that it attacks zone coverage well now we're going to go over match in just a second but again i just want to show you if they play press man on you you'll see he's going to kind of get that little glitchy separation and right there is a bad free form you've got to get that ball up and over the top of that player but that's something good to know because it tells me that they can't really play press man on me now the question is can they play off coverage man you'll see right here off coverage man is basically worse as you can see right here this route is going to destroy man coverage on the right side of the screen so now We've got a lot of stuff going for us in this power play. Now, the next thing that we want to test is how does this do against match coverage? So I'm going to put match coverage on the field. And what you're going to notice here is kind of match coverage. You've got a couple of openings. You've got your crosser. You've also got your in route to the left side. So you've got some options um, if they do indeed want to go ahead and run match coverage. Again, you want to put that tight end on a quick out. I love to put the running back on an in route on this. And the reason being is because it allows me to attack the flats on both sides of the field. I think that's super valuable. Um, another little trick you can do is you can float the back to the left. That's going to change how match coverage plays this entire play. You're going to see right here that now, you know, CeeDee Lamb could be a potential touchdown over the top, right? It's going to change the landscape of how match coverage plays because this is technically a compression formation so because it's a, com a technically a, a compression formation right we can use motion to kind of change how the defense is going to play so if they're playing match coverage on us we do something like this and as you can see now my crosser is one-on-one -on -one over the middle of the field as is that deep in route
right? So we've kind of checked the boxes on a couple of things. Now, if they blitz me from man coverage, I need to know what is my quick read, right? What is my quick read if they're gonna blitz me from man, especially if I'm gonna send five people out on a route. If they blitz me from man, I know I can either hit my in route or I can hit my tight end out route relatively quickly and be able to attack man coverage. So again, let me show you now the tight end out route that we'll see here. And if they play man coverage on us, this tight end out route, because he has short and elite, he's gonna light up and give us some decent separation. Another thing that we, uh, that I think is important to, to see is, you know, how does this do? Let's say we block, let's say we, you know, block the running back out of a play action play, right? Um, you'll see here, that this is still gonna be fine, it's gonna pick up the play, and now we've got one-on-one -on -one over the top, and again, you see how glitchy that route is to CD Lamb. So that tells me, okay, now what's beautiful, what, what's great about this offense is there's powerful routes that they have to stop. There's powerful routes that they have to stop. They have to stop the deep cross, or they've stopped the dig, they've stopped that fade that's really glitchy, they gotta stop the tight end out. Those are really powerful routes that they have to stop. Now, for example, let's take a look at one of the most popular ways that people like to blitz. Essentially, it's this cover three kind of strategy um, and where they're gonna be able to take away our hard flags, right? So let's say we put this guy on a route. What's gonna be open here quick? Well, I can sneak that right to the tight end quick because again, that route to CD Lamb is going, it's kind of essentially a, a short wheel where it's kind of wheeling to the outside. So you can see now how powerful this play is, and also I think super important, how good it is at attacking a lot of areas on the field. We can attack the left side flat, we can attack the right side flat, we can attack the middle of the field, right? You see all these different areas that are coming open for us. Now, um, let me give you a little inverse or a little bit of another variation of this. Let's say we wanted to run this. Now this turns this play into kind of a makeshift variation of the shallow cross concept. So now your tight end's gonna drag across. You see that's gonna beat man quick to the side, to the left side, and then you still have your crossers coming back side. So there's a lot of value that you get in this play. You get a lot of bang for your buck. If you wanna block the running back and simply drag the tight end, you still have a flat threat on the, on the, on the left in that deep fade, and then you have a flat threat on the right. So you have a lot of different options. Um, a power play, you can run it a couple different ways and it's still gonna be technically the same basic thing. Let me show you one other thing that I think is kind of interesting, this little ghost motion out here to the tight end. So now we've gone from being in a tight set to being in a spread set. So we can create the same basic concept like this and you see how this is gonna change how the defense is going to play us. So there's little ways that you can kind of get at the same thing, but this is a really good um, power play because it's gonna force them to have to do certain things. The other thing you wanna test is, again, if I just simply block my running back, how does that look? You see here, it looks pretty good. You can throw that that deep crosser um, to Calvin Johnson. Again, that crosser is gonna be a little bit, you gotta understand like if they're just gonna play man coverage on us, we're gonna take the in route or we're gonna take that route right there to CD Lamb, right? When they start to go to zone, then this crosser all of a sudden becomes really powerful because it doesn't stop moving, right? So cover three, for example, you're gonna see that, you know, that crosser is not, he's not stopping his run and he's gonna get deep across the sideline just like that. This is a great power play because it beats everything the defense can do. In theory, it's almost impossible to stop, right? If we could, we could literally run this play all game, making minor adjustments like maybe doing a drag to the tight end and releasing the back late, or maybe taking the tight end, put him on a route, put the running back on an out route, or maybe we can float the running back and put him on a wheel now. Little tweaks that change how the defense has to play you, I think is super, super important in any kind of offense. So. This is a great power play. It's step one to creating uh, your own offensive scheme from scratch. If you want to get my entire um, offensive and defensive eBooks uh, in Mad 23, make sure you join the Patreon. I guarantee you it's going to get you uh, much better at the game because it's going to teach you how to think. It's going to teach you how to fish, but it's also going to show you some of the best offenses and defenses in the entire game. 22 different offensive and defensive eBooks when you join. $10 gets you access to everything, all eBooks, all updates, all all year. Make sure to sign up for that. The link is down in the description below.